This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 11th, 2016. We're live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, awaiting the release of the Dragon cargo vehicle to conclude the eighth mission of the SpaceX Commercial Resupply Mission. You are go to perform Dragon configuration checks in step one in 1.602, one Dragon departure monitoring. Leading the flight control team today here in Mission Control is Flight Director Amit Shatria. Next to him is the CAPCOM, the voice between Mission Control and the International Space Station orbiting 250 miles above the Earth, Serena Annan. Over in Hawthorne, California, the SpaceX Flight Director Paul Tompkins is leading the SpaceX Flight Control team. The Dragon is now in position, scheduled for release uh, on time at 8.18 a.m. Central Time. We're about to enter an orbital sunset here in the next few minutes, now passing 260 statute miles uh, just southeast of South Africa. On orbit standing by is the European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake, the prime robotic arm operator out of the Cupola workstation. His backup NASA astronaut Jeff Williams are both in the cupola module of the International Space Station awaiting to the command to, for release at 8.18 a.m. Central Time. You're getting a live view of the Dragon cargo vehicle, uh, 250 miles above the Earth, now about to enter an orbital sunset, slated for release um, in the next few minutes. A recap of some of the activities to get Dragon into position. Hatch closure occurred at 11.20 a.m. Central Time yesterday, May 10th. After depressurization early this morning, NASA astronaut Tim Copra began unbolting the uh, common berthing mechanism that's holding the SpaceX Dragon cargo vehicle at 5.15 a.m. Central Time from the Nader port of Harmony. What you're seeing is a recorded, sped-up version of this, um, this morning's activities. Ground controllers unberthed the SpaceX uh, cargo vehicle at 6.02 a.m. Central Time and maneuvered it into position for release where it remains currently. In just about 10 minutes, we'll hear flight controllers here in Mission Controls Control Houston uh, give the go for release. After release, the Dragon is set to fire its engines three times to move a safe distance away from station. Once uh, the first depart burn will occur three minutes after uh, its release at 8.18, the burn will occur at 8.21 a.m. Central Time. The next burn uh, will occur just a minute and a half later at uh, 8.22 in procedure 1.602, we have primary sensor of LiDAR 1 and CCP LEDs are nominal. We copy. Good report. European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake reporting good signs for uh, release scheduled on time for 8.18 a.m. Central Time. After the first two burns, um, the Dragon will get into position for its third burn uh, to get out of the keep out sphere and remain outside of the approach ellipsoid uh, in a safe trajectory away from the International Space Station. It will, remain, it will remain outside of that trajectory for uh, three orbits and begin its deorbit burn 
performing a retrograde firing. That's a backwards firing of the engines to slow down and drop out of orbit at 1.01 p.m. Central Time. After the deorbit burn, trunk separation is scheduled to begin at 1.18 p.m. Central Time. And the first drogue shoots will be released at 1.47 p.m. Central Time. Main shoots come out at 1.48. Splashdown of the SpaceX Dragon cargo vehicle is set to occur at 1.55 p.m. Central Time today, uh, landing 155 miles just southwest of Long Beach, California. Correction, at 1.55 p.m. Central Time, uh, the Dragon SpaceX cargo vehicle will land 162 uh, miles uh, just southwest of Long Beach, California. 261 statute miles uh, just southwest of Long Beach, California. Once splashdown occurs, SpaceX team has 25 to 26 hours to get to the dock of Long Beach, California to unload time-critical experiments and return it to, to NASA. The Dragon cargo vehicle will be prepared for its return trip to the SpaceX test facility in McGregor, Texas for processing. Dragon cargo vehicles returning more than 3,700 pounds of cargo and experiments and is currently the only resupply vehicle that can return cargo. Other resupply vehicles burn up in the atmosphere. SpaceX CRS-8 mission launched on April 8th uh, aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. One. Engine ignition lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket with science for today and for deep space exploration tomorrow. Station on two with a question on the uh, CCP. After launching April 8th on a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, the Dragon cargo vehicle was captured and berthed to the station uh, at the Nader Port of Harmony on April 10th for its month-long stay aboard the International Space Station. Here you're seeing recorded footage of uh, the arrival of the Dragon cargo vehicle. The vehicle carried 7,000 pounds of cargo and experiments to orbit, uh, including the Bigelow expandable activity module in the unpressurized trunk of the vehicle. The Bigelow expandable activity module, known as BEAM, was installed on the aft port of the Tranquility module on April 16th. That module was scheduled to expand to full volume on May 26th for its two-year stay aboard the International Space Station. Once expanded, the crew will enter at a later date after a series of checks. And uh, throughout its two-year stays, crew members aboard will enter about two to three times per year to assist with some of the testing inside the module, including radiation testing and micrometeoroid or orbital debris impacts.
Here's a live view of the Dragon cargo vehicle um, now at an orbital sunset under low light. Flight controllers here in Houston are go for release. A good view of the Dragon cargo vehicle at the end of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm of the International Space Station. Currently scheduled on track for release in just under six minutes. After the conclusion of SpaceX mission CRS-8, the next mission, CRS-9, is scheduled to launch late June this year aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Among the payload will be the first of two international docking adapters for future commercial crew vehicles, including the SpaceX Crew Dragon and the Boeing CST-100 Starliner. The first international docking adapter will be attached on a spacewalk to be scheduled for this summer on the forward end of Harmony. This is the same port where space shuttles docked to PMA-2. four minutes until Dragon's release. Dragon cargo vehicle is scheduled for release at 8.18 Central Time. Ground controllers here are, are uh, ready for release at that time. If not, there is a 15-minute window until 8.33 a.m. Central Time for a uh, nominal release. And just about two minutes until the release of the Dragon SpaceX cargo vehicle carrying 3,700 pounds of cargo and experiments back to Earth. Among the 3,700 pounds is about 1,300 pounds of science. 
that will be on the load of the Dragon cargo vehicle. Among the science are the remaining samples of Scott Kelly's uh, from one, his one-year mission, including more than 1,000 tubes of blood urine and saliva for analysis. Dragon cargo vehicle still on track for release in just under one minute. The release window is now open at 8.18 a.m. Central Time. The window closes at 8.33 a.m. Central Time. Eight nineteen a.m. southwest of Adelaide, Australia, the Dragon is released. Two hundred and sixty statute miles above above the Earth from the International Space Station. Standing by for the first departure burn, scheduled to occur three minutes after release. Again, that's a release time at 8.19 a.m. Central Time, just southwest of Adelaide, Australia, 260 miles above the Earth.
Dragon is now drifting a safe distance away from the International Space Station. The separation from the Cannon Arm 2 is now clear. There we could see a little light from the first depart burn. Uh, now on course for a safe, safe distance away from the International Space Station. And Houston, Station on Space Ground 2, Dragon, depart commanded. Copy that, Tim and Jeff. Nicely done. Confirmation from European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake on board the International Space Station successful release of the Dragon cargo vehicle. Dragon appears to be looking nominal. We'll continue to monitor, and uh, Dragon spacecraft has served us well, and it's good to see it departing full of science, and we wish it a safe recovery back to planet Earth. Tim, we copy all and appreciate those words. Uh, for your awareness, departure burn one is complete and departure burn two will occur in approximately one minute. Okay. Congratulatory words from Tim Peake aboard the International Space Station for a successful release of the Dragon cargo vehicle. In just under one minute, we'll start seeing the second departure burn. Houston Station on two, we're looking for your go for uh, to save the SSR bus. Depart burn two, completed successfully. And Jeff, you are go. Here you go. And Station Houston on two for Dragon. Departure burn two is complete. Departure burn three will occur in approximately seven minutes. So you're go to monitor per step three in one decimal six zero two. Understood, and we're monitoring in step three, one decimal six zero two. We're getting a better look at the Dragon drifting slowly away from the International Space Station. Depart Burn 3 is scheduled to occur in just under 7 minutes once it's beyond the 150 meter range mark uh, away from the International Space Station. The Dragon cargo vehicle is just slightly visible from the lights aboard the International Space Station now that we are in orbital darkness.
now drifting away from the International Space, Space Station, getting slowly uh, smaller and darker. Uh, you can see the bright red light from the second burn. Correction, the red light is from this, one of the strobe lights aboard the uh, Dragon cargo vehicle. Third burn um, scheduled in just under four minutes. three minutes until the final burn to um, drift slowly away from a safe distance away from the International Space Station uh, from the keep out sphere 200 meters away. Two minutes until the final burn, the Dragon cargo vehicle is only slightly visible now. Once the final burn occurs, burn occurs and it exits the keep out sphere 200 meters away, it'll just be about five minutes until it exits the approach ellipsoid. It will remain there for about three orbits, safely away from the International Space Station before the final deorbit burn to begin its um, deorbit and splash down in the Pacific Ocean. Final burn scheduled in just under 20 seconds.
Station Houston on two for Dragon. Departure burn three is complete. Dragon is outside the keep out sphere. We uh, copy outside the keep out sphere and we'll continue monitoring. Thank you. Dragon cargo vehicle is now outside the keep out sphere. The two lights from the cargo vehicle are shining brightly on the solar panels. We are now 250 miles, statute miles above the Earth, just east of Papua New Guinea, over the Pacific Ocean. In just a few minutes, the Dragon will be uh, outside the approach ellipsoid and be a safe distance away from the International Space Station where, where it will remain for three orbits. It will begin its deorbit burn at 1.01 p.m. Central Time uh, for a splashdown at 1.55 p.m. Central Time. Uh, 262 statute miles southwest of Long Beach, California. Dragon cargo vehicle drifting slowly out of sight after its release again at 8.19 a.m. Central Time, 260 miles above the Earth, uh, just southwest of Adelaide, Australia. Here's a view of the SpaceX flight controllers over in Hawthorne, California, led by Flight Director Paul Tompkins. Once outside of the approach ellipsoid, that will end joint operations between here in Mission Control Houston of the International Space Station Flight Control Room and the Flight Control Team in Hawthorne, California. Flight controllers at SpaceX will take over for the splashdown operations.
the station Houston on two. Dragon is outside the approach ellipsoid on a safe 24-hour free drift trajectory. Station copies. Thanks, Rena. And that will end integrated operations between flight controllers here in Mission Control and flight controllers over in Hawthorne, California for the SpaceX team led by Flight Director Paul Tompkins. Congratulatory award sent from orbit, uh, European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake, the prime robotics arm operator for the release of the Dragon cargo vehicle. Again, the release occurred at 8.19 a.m. Central Time, 260 miles above the Earth, just southwest of Adelaide, uh, Australia. The Dragon cargo vehicle performed three successful uh, depart burns, now uh, outside of the approach ellipsoid, uh, a safe distance away from the International Space Station where it will remain, uh, it can remain for a 24-hour window. Right now that Dragon cargo vehicle is scheduled to perform a deorbit burn at 1.01 p.m. Central Time. From there, trunk separation will begin at 1.18 p.m. Uh, drogue chutes will deploy at 1.47 p.m. and main chutes will come out at 1.48 p.m. Splashdown again is going to occur in the Pacific Ocean, uh, 1.55 p.m. Central Time today. The SpaceX team will recover the vehicle and has 25 to 26 hours to get to the dock at Long Beach, California and unload time-critical experiments uh, for return to NASA. Dragon cargo vehicle will be prepared for its return trip to the SpaceX test facility in McGregor, Texas for processing. More than 3,700 pounds of cargo and experiments are being delivered uh, by the SpaceX cargo vehicle. This, the Dragon is the only resupply vehicle uh, currently in the space market that ha uh, has the ability to return cargo uh, to Earth. Many vital science experiments on board Dragon's cargo of the 3,700 pounds, 1,300 pounds are exclusively science experiments one of which is a microchannel diffusion study uh, that investigates the fluids at a nanoscale. This is a study that is, um, can exclusively be studied on the International Space Station given that there is no gravity. And Earth's gravity is not strong enough to interact with sample molecules, so they behave more like they would at the nano or atomic scale. In addition is Casis uh, protein crystal growth. This is the fourth experiment for crystal growth uh, by Casis, uh, looking to grow protein crystals uh, in a perfect formation um, because of the microgravity environment of the International Space Station. Protein crystals have applications in medicine and specific drug design and development. Growing proteins in microgravity enables scientists to use sort of designer compounds uh, to chemically target and inhibit important human uh, biological pathways, uh, thought to be responsible for actually different types of cancer. Okay, Serena, that's copied. Thank you. In addition, the last remaining samples of Scott Kelly's one-year mission are returning on the uh, Dragon cargo vehicle, again for splashdown at 1.55 p.m. Central Time in the Pacific Ocean. These are the last of the remaining samples on the station. Uh, they include more than 1,000 tombs of blood, urine, and saliva.
all of these samples are to be analyzed with the other samples that have returned in previous missions, um, such as the biomedical profile, CardioOx that looks at the circulatory and cardiovascular system, some of the fluid shifts that are believed to be linked with um, intracranial pressure, pressure inside the head, and vision changes for many of the astronauts on board. And, and also uh, the last remaining samples of the twin study that has been conducted over the past, um, during Scott's one year aboard the station with his twin brother while he was down on Earth, Mark Kelly. Also returning is the EMU-3011. This is the uh, spacesuit that Tim Copra was wearing in January for a spacewalk uh, with, his, uh, with astronaut Tim Peake to return power to one of the power channels of the International Space Station. During the EVA, Tim Copra reported a water bubble in his helmet. No one was in any danger. Uh, the spacewalk was terminated and the astronauts returned safely back to the airlock. Station on two for VCTV. Go ahead, Tim. We're attempting to call uh, VCTV through the BME TV account and just want to see if we can get connected. Okay, no problem. We're reconnecting now. Successful release release of the Dragon cargo vehicle for SpaceX commercial resupply mission eight. The Dragon is outside of the approach ellipsoid, safe distance away from the International Space Station, uh, on track to splash down at 1:55 p.m. Central Time. Joint operations between the SpaceX flight controllers in Hawthorne, California, and flight controllers here at NASA, NASA's International Space Station flight control room, uh, have ended. There will be no Space Station Live today. The next Space Station Live will occur tomorrow, May 12th. This is Mission Control, Houston.